Welcome, I'm really happy to be here and virtually meet you. I am Ivan Olivares. I am a Chilean man from Santiago of Chile working at Globan as a software architect. You can find me in social media there in, in iolivares.com. If you want to talk about technology, photo shoes, or something else, just tweet me. Now, I always had problems to introduce myself because I love my native town. So I decided to summarize it in my side B. Well, hello from the other side. I am a Chilean builded in Antofagasta, Chile. I am a JavaScript lover and that website I mentioned it is fully powered by the Purcell and Next.js. So today we will talk about building the next generation of airlines websites. And yes, that number is my number of registrations for the conference. And now we are more than 16,000. Thank you all and congrats to the team on Next.js and Bursel. So at the end of the talk, you will have learned why it's important to have a simple and universally aligned tech enable, enabler to solve your business needs with also a beautiful user experience. So let's start with a context. To start talking about this, I would like to introduce you some context where this happens. This is a real story about a group of mercenaries building an entire digital airline from scratch during a global pandemic. Any similarity to reality is purely accidental. Well, not all was mercenaries. We call it mercenaries because there, there are the guys who create this at the beginning. But today, we are more than 30 teams working together here. I am presenting the results of the hard work of every single and amazing team working in these projects. Congrats, guys. But who we are talking about? Who are we talking about? Hmm? Well, I can tell you today to the brand because we don't have the the possibility and uh, we are working to write this in the success cases but i can tell you this is an airline from latin america and it's big how big this is a, this is a story about the main airline of latin america with one of the largest connection networks in the world before covid 19 crisis they transported more than 70 million of passengers operating in more than 1,000 daily flights is big, big, big airline. Well, I mentioned it, we built it from scratch, right? But why? Why from scratch? What are the reasons of that? When you're transporting that number of passengers in a year, is almost obviously you are having millions of daily digital users, right? Buying tickets, doing check-ins, gender flight days, among other use cases. And for that, you need a world-class digital platform. But we had a little monster problem here. Sorry by the draw, but this is the only way I've found to express this idea. Do you understand that? The real estate of the art we have are years of years of intent to create digital products isolated one from another and in some cases isolated from the business, creating frameworks of technology each time and in each of the iterations, thumbs of tech depths are accumulated there in that 
base. Yes, is I know, no, no, you, you know this story, right? And you now are saying, hey, that's my stack. No, it's a joke, sorry. And this, yeah, yeah I know how you feel it. But as, as usual, we also have a legacy code. That amazing and incredible black box also exists. And it's not so black as everyone thinks. I know them. So let's back to the business. That was just the neighbor, right? But if the enabler not works, hmm. when you have millions of consumers trying to buy their tickets or change their flight dates, failure is not an option. Your digital platform can fail. But when you have years of entropy in your code base, failing is more likely which each of new change you add to your code and you create that mountain, right? So that's the state of the art. And that is because the client and we decide build it from scratch. Well, how we do it? We early mentioned it. We are now more than 500 people working in this project. That means a lot of teams working together in a single platform, the website. That is an interesting challenge for your architecture. How you can handle that? We decided to start working with micro frontends. We work in a micro frontend architecture because we need to generate a single aligned channel but at the same time, take care about the independency of each team working in parallel to ensure the delivery value, right? That is the first goal. In this example, we see how a standard e-commerce, uh, a standard e-commerce flow looks like in this architecture. We have the home, we have the list, the detail, the basket, the payment, and the confirm, right? But the team checkout owns the complete checkout flow. Team decide does not have to know how we uh, how the checkout works, right? Uh, but they need to integrate the team checkout. The buy button is important. The important that important button. A fragment of that code uh, in uh, of of that code of the button needs to be in the detail page to make it work, right? The team checkout basically provides this button as a standalone micro frontend, and that connects the two teams working together, but uh, in parallel at the same time. That is the idea, basically, of the micro frontends. Well, but who do you align these to avoid costly decisions. That is the more important thing, you know. This is a big online that we need to avoid the costly decisions. Well, we use Next.js to build a bootstrap code application with common configs and utils. These applications are created by our own CLI to create new apps really to the ready, ready, sorry, ready to deploy in minutes. That provides us 100 aligned front-end teams, right? Because all the teams are working by, with the same code base. And the teams are always ready to deploy in production their apps with a single version of Next.js and common libraries to solve problems like authentication, monitoring, SEO, analytics, security, and common behaviors of the entire website. Well, we call it a universe in a box, basically because it's a universe of opportunities, but, it, but this is inside a box to align all the teams together. Let's see this in details. In this box, we have several common features. 
enable a lot of possibility with these strategies. Like I mentioned in authentication, I18N and SEO or SEO or some static content, themes and components, server side A-B testing, security management, where the things like page restrictions, CSRF validations, and other strategies recommended by the OWASP were implemented were implemented. We have feature flags, we have analytics, and last but not least, we have session management. Now, let me present you the box and let's open the box. Let's start with authentication. Authentication is the core of all e-commerce websites because the user flows should be personalized every day more, more every day. And a good authentic system, authentication system is basically secure. We need the security, but also have a smooth user experience. And for that, in my opinion, we need to provide for our users the possibility to be logged in from the most possible touch points or points of contact in our system, in our flows. In our box, we decided to implement Auth0. And this was very easy with Next.js in server-side render mode and with the bootstrap code. The bootstrap code uh, enable us as every single app ready to log in users with Auth0 universal login pages. And when the user are logging, the app have the data of the user in their props, and the props are ready to use it. For example, the user ID, the capture the the email of the user, or pre-render uh, data of the user when the user needs. Now, how we perceive the user authentication? Basically, when the user changed to an old set page right? They go to another app with the same base of authentication in our booster code. That creates the persistent. The persistent are in the booster code and the user change and navigates between every single app and at the same time is the same code create, uh, persistent the authentication. Now, let me show you I18N and CEO. We define a strategy of inside code data fetched on build time. That means our applications can use the data from the inside for internationalization as JSON using I18 Next and at the same time we use Next CEO with also objects inside the code for our CEO strategy. All of these are served in server side render and works perfectly in every single app, avoiding fetch for things like, example, uh, services dedicated as single points of, points of failure for things like A18N. And we always have the data ready for our users. We avoid that type of services and we just have the data inside the application every single time the user are navigating and that are uh, built in the build time. The, just in the build time, we build the I18N data and the CEO data. Now, let's talk about themes and components. Imagine a single company with different type of consumers like B2B and B2C. You have two users, but you need to reuse your UI components because the reusability of code is part of our principles. There, our design system, we call it Boreal, or Boreal, integrates the strategy of themes to reuse the structure of component at 100%, but the couple for our themes enable the feature of render in two different themes the same component. For example, if I have the button A and the button B, 
the button A could be red in the B2B website and, and green in the B2C website because we have two different brands for two different consumers, right? And yes, that is service and render experience. And that means we don't have folk. About, thinking about that, uh, let's talk about A-B testing. To create amazing experiences and reach the time to market, A-B testing is an amazing technique to discover and validate your hypothesis. Erling that use code because you think that hypothesis works. Now, in this talk, I will not explain everything about A-B testings, but what happens here is an interesting challenge around A-B testing implementations. Because server-side render enables you to have server-side A-B testings, and that changes the way to implement it for developers and for the users. You can start creating A-B testing for more real experiences, enabling things like displaying two differences on your homepage with a half percent of your users, right? You can show to the half percent the, the one homepage A, uh, the half percent the, the homepage B. And at the same time, the user don't feel that the, the experience is changed because you persist the decision of the A-B testing tool and your user always just see the same B or A version, but that you are testing your features and you can discover what happened with the experience of the user or what happened with your goals. That's amazing. So next, let me tell you about one of the first principles in every airline, this is very important, and this is security. To have a full secure application with a single implementation of strategies recommended by OWASP, we're having the bootstrap code. And that was interesting piece to reach a great security management. Because we can implement an ANSIAS RF easily for oral applications at the same time, or other features like dynamic restriction for our pages with literally one single line of code. That means, yes, one single line of code. You can say to your next page, is restricted property to force the authentication flow for that page if your user are not logged in. And with that, you can solve the problem of have rules for authentication user and road for not authentication users. Now, if you want to turn off features by flags, we also have that inside the box. You just need a configuration file with your flags, the one that can be dynamically updated, and your page always receives your flags to turn on features or turn off features. In your UI, always, for your components or for functionalities. Or simple, an entire piece of another micro UI app, for example. Well, and what happened in analytics? When you have analytics in these days, you need to control it, the implementations, because the users need to decide or consent if they want to accept your policy of cookies because we have laws like GDPR or LGPT in Brazil. That is possibly, possibly thanks to have this bootstrap code in all our applications because with that the user can control loading of your analytics or making or marketing tools for example and that set cookies to track user conversions. But if the user don't want it, the user don't, don't accept the, the cookie policy and the analytics don't be loaded. Well, you have um, an e-commerce, right? And when you have an e-commerce in these days, like an airline website is another e-commerce, you need to persist the shopping cart at least, right? And that requires session management to have uh, things like 
a stateful flow. We merge this concept to our micro frontends, creating different and independent web applications, but all organized in a single session management for the user flows. That is perfect to create a smooth user experiences. And that mainly is the, the universe we create. And this has a huge impact for our time to market. I am very impressed with this project. Let me show you that in numbers. The impact of this architecture and strategy with other things happens in this project was amazing. We code and ship in just six months with 20 teams, the MVP of an entirely new website and a mobile app for this airline. And for the user experience, this means this means we have a two times faster website measuring the LCP. But also that website is three times lighter. And my favorite of everything is the CLS. We don't have CLS, we don't have folk because we use, we decide to use next with the service are rendered. And it is part of our principles now, not having CLS and not having folk. That means for the business, increasing rates of conversions uh, and decreasing the time, uh, the average time the user uh, for purchase a ticket, for example, over purchase their, their flights. And important, uh, one important thing is the CEO strategy we reviewed it earlier increase the conversion rate from organic searches because we have better content for the searches, search engines. So what next? We're back to the flight. That means we will back to have millions of users again. And now is the time to include three things. First, we are working on moving on to static site generations that will improve our performance and enable us to implement new features for passengers through the Jamstack. Imagine having just an HTML in your closed storage and your CDN to load your homepage. That is the future. That is what, what we want to, to have it in the few in the next month. Second, in global we empower organization for digital and cognitive revolutions. These airlines are already empowered in digital and we are working in cognitive revolution through different areas, but the personalization is one of that. The possibilities enabled by this new generation of websites plus the powers of AI are flying to infinity. Imagine if you can create micro and web components with a static uh, site generation based on events that users do. You can personalize the experience in real time. That will be amazing, right? So thinking about AI, let me show you one last thing. This is augmented coding. With augmented coding or ecosystem powered by AI, you can elevate the speed of developers and improve their skills of coding experience. So coming soon, we will support Next.js as part of the tool. And with this, we can improve our code documentation and avoid code duplications with code to code relationship suggestions by augmented coding. Imagine you want to create a page with a flight date component, right? And you just need to say that to receive the piece of code to implement it in your app. And the piece of code is based on Next.js. That's amazing. And yes, I know, sounds like a not real thing, but to write thousands of lines of code and hundreds of features, avoid code duplications and be effective with our speed to coding is very, very important. So, that is airlines 
and the next generations of website we can create. Thanks for watching and thank you all from Santiago de Chile.